um, we were mentioning that there's rumors out there that Henry Cavill might be considered for like Wolverine mm-hmm. down the line. Um, and it, and we, then we start talking about Superman. And then your connection with Superman, obviously, at that one point you were you were going to direct the, the, 100%. the last film. Yeah, I mean, I got thrown off Superman because, you know, my whole life I've really had a problem with being agoraphobic and afraid to fly, yeah. which is ironic. And I remember at that time I was telling the heads of Warner Brothers, which at the time was Alan Horn and, and Barry Meyer, I'm like, guys, I can't go to Australia. I can't fly to Australia. They're like, oh, you'll be fine. You're in Big G. You'll be, come on. <laughs> I'm like, oh, God. And, um, you know, literally right up to the point of, of the day I'm supposed to go, I'm like, I can't go. They obviously had to throw me off the picture. Yeah. Singer came in and did the movie. Um, yeah, I mean, that was like a real low point for me as a human being, but it drove me to go in there and, uh, you know, meet with two women at UCLA who specialize in such things. And then I got oh. better. You know, it was really hard. And I, I just slowly started putting one foot in front of the other and started flying. And, you know, now I, I never go a week without flying. And, wow. So you know, you're, over, you're over your fear uh, over it? or I, I would never. I mean, yeah, I love flying. And wow. in a way, I would say I'm over it, but I would never be so bold as to say I'm over it. It's like it's like <coughs> if you used to weigh 500 pounds yeah. and now you're at your fighting weight. So mm-hmm. you go, oh, you're, you're like, well, I'm sort of over it, but I got to do what I need to yeah. do to stay at this or yeah. I'll go back. It's like I've reconciled it for so long. It was a tremendous source of shame and I didn't want to talk about it because it's so emasculating and it's so such a bummer. But I've kind of reconciled that I never went to school to learn how to make a record, but yeah. I've written number one songs and made number one records. I never went to film school, but I can make a movie and I never went to TV class and I can executive produce a TV show. So, I mean... Maybe because my brain is vibrating on that frequency that tortures me a lot, I can see and hear things just a little bit differently as to make them interesting. Is there something like a project that you've watched or seen, movie, TV, it doesn't matter, that you were like, man, I really would have loved to have been involved in that? Millions. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, I I love Ozark. I love Game of Thrones. Uh, I don't know. When I see Ex Machina, I think that's about as good as a movie as a movie can be. Mm I'm about as excited as you can be for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. We'll see yeah. how that goes. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I, I, I really, really still love it. You're still a big I, fan. Yeah, I mean, just yeah. A, I'm just fundamentally a fan, and it's ironic because, I don't know, I mean, I still, I drive around, I listen to music on 10 and everything from Black Flag to Migos and just what have you, and I still watch the movies I watch and get excited the way I get excited. So it just hasn't faded. It doesn't feel like a bummer job. It's still very fun, and I'm very passionate on getting it right. And, you know, yeah, you have those moments along the way where you're deeply, deeply humbled, more than humbled, you're embarrassed. I mean, Superman was the all-time low point of my yeah. life because I was buddies. I mean, J.J. was writing it, and, you know, Warner's is making it. We really wanted to do it, and uh, I let everybody down, and I couldn't do it. But it got me into a place where, like I said, I saw these two women who, who taught me how to, you know, get my head wrapped around it, and it, I got better. Yeah. So in that sense, there's a bit of a silver lining there. Did you ever get to explain yourself to them afterwards? Did you, have you spoken to them since and said? Oh, yeah. I mean, my closest friend is Alan Horn. I mean, to this day, it's just, uh, yeah, we're, we're really cool. I mean, and Peter Roth. Right. I mean, if I have to reflect on who are my closest, you know, the Titans, Peter Roth, Alan Horn, Tom Rothman, you know, those are the ones that, you know, Quentin and, and Lawrence Bender sort of started me in the early days at a band apart when I was making music videos and commercials. But I don't talk to them nearly as much as I mean, I'd, I'd see Alan Horn right now at lunch and we'd hug it out. It's yeah. awesome.